You know, we're going to be surprised in heaven. There's going to be some folks up there that you didn't think is going to be there. You swore they'd never make it. You just thought they'll never make it, never make it. Then there'll be some folks you thought was, might be there, but uh-oh. I, uh, I just want to read this to you when I got to heaven. I was shocked, confused, bewildered as I entered heaven's door, not by the beauty of it all, by the lights or its decor, but it was the folks in heaven who made me sputter and gasp, the thieves, the liars, the sinners, the alcoholics, and the trash. There stood the kid from seventh grade who swiped my lunch money twice. Next to him was my old neighbor who never had anything to say nice. Uncle Bill, who I always thought was rotting away in hell, well, he's sitting pretty on cloud nine, looking incredibly well. I nudged Jesus, and I said, what's the deal? I would love to hear your take. How did all these sinners get up here? God, you must have made a mistake. And why is everybody so quiet and so humber, uh, somber? Please give me a clue. Hush, child, he said. They're all in shock. No one thought they'd see you. You better make sure you're ready because he's coming back for us. He's coming back for us. Say amen. amen. For the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about valleys. Most of us would like to run as fast as we can run as believers to get away from the valleys, and we will call those low points in our lives. We'd rather not have them. Isn't that true of all of us? There are highs and lows to life. Some of the most picturesque places and rarest beauties in the whole world is tall, gigantic mountains and deep valleys with beautiful, clear stream flowing through those valleys and all kinds of vegetation and, and rapids in the, in the streams. And people travel thousands of miles to just get to take pictures of that and just to view it and see it for themselves. Take those pictures back and look at them and think, man, what, isn't that the most beautiful place in the world? God's creation, giant mountains, bluffs and rocks and streams and lush valleys. At the top of the mountain, usually it's rocky and, and weather extreme, huge boulders and cliffs and so on. Farther down the mountain you get, more vegetation appears. And when you reach the valley in the lowest part of that, there's just flowers, fragrances, and streams, as I mentioned. Everything looks like it's got a life to it and vibrant. Life, too, has its mountaintops, and it also has its valleys. Valley moments, the lows of our lives. There are high points. All of us like to stand on top of the mountain and be there forever, but life doesn't work that way. We all go through high points, and we all go through low points. There are people, if they'd be honest with you, they'd tell you that every one of us, doesn't make any difference who you are, what family you're born into, you got those high points and you got the low points. And some would like, they like to put on a face like the low points never exist in their lives, but in reality, they know they do. There's lows in everybody's life. But don't spend your time just talking about and reminiscing all the valleys you go through, the low point. You can't X them out either. They exist. Valleys are there, but they have a purpose in our development, in our relationship with Christ, in our growth, in our maturity in him. Almost every great event in Scripture happened in somebody's life, happened at a low point in their life, in a valley. For instance, Ezekiel was carried away by the Holy Spirit. Well, don't you know that would be a wonderful thing? But it's where it set him down was in the valley of dry bones. What he witnessed was a horrible sight. What he witnessed was a re in reality spiritual dead nation. Kind of sounds like America, doesn't it? Ezekiel was carried away by the Spirit, but he landed in a valley. John the Revelator wrote the book of Revelations on the Isle of Patmos, banished from civilization, alone in the world, all by himself. At the lowest point of his life, he wrote one of the greatest books man will ever read. 
The lady with an issue of blood was at death's door struggling to live one more minute. At her lowest point, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she did, and she was. Can I tell you that miracles happen in the valleys of our lives? When we get desperate, when we get hungry, when we get thirsty, when nothing else will satisfy, nothing else will do, when you get to that point in the valley, God intersects our lives and tremendous things begin to happen in the valley. God's presence always arrives at our point of impossibility. God knows how to meet you at your point of need. Do I hear it? Amen. I thought about this message and I thought about the time when David met Goliath. The Bible says that the battle took place, the confrontation took place, you know where it took place? At the valley of Elah. Here David was challenged by a giant in the valley. I thought about this and so I did a little bit of study on it and Goliath's name means stripped a captive. Hallelujah. God already knew what was going to happen to him. <clears throat> David's name means beloved of God. <clears throat> when the beloved of God meets the one stripped and captive, guess who wins? God decides the outcome in the valley of Elah. Elah was known for beautiful terebinth trees, shady groves in the valley. I thought about that and I thought, well, you know what? The Garden of Eden also had trees in it and there was a battle that waged there. Satan thought he'd won, but look down through the history of time. God's always raised up another man to fight a battle to defeat the devil. Could I tell you that the battle is the Lord and God's going to have victory in your valley, in your time of need, whatever you're going through with. God's greater than your valley. He's greater than any giant you're faced with this morning. God's greater. Champions are made in the valley. The valley produces kings. Out of the valley walks tomorrow's leaders. Kings are born in adversity. In the lowest places of life is where our faith is forged, when our mind is made up and where God enters our world and we walk out of there a chain transformed individual who's been in the heat of battle and God has empowered us, hallelujah, to walk through the storm, walk through the trial, walk out of the valley victorious, hallelujah. hallelujah. The title of my message is No Valley is Gonna Conquer Me. One of the greatest gospel songs that is written and beloved by thousands and tens of thousands is an old song that says, there's peace in the valley for me. Veronica looked up all of that and she found out that the song was written by Thomas Dorsey in 1937. And it was written for Mahalia Jackson. But in 1951, a country singer by the native name of Red Foley made it popular. It was the first gospel song that, over, that ever sold over one million uh, albums, one million copies. And then a young boy from Memphis, Tennessee come along and his name was Elvis Presley. Anybody heard of him? And he recorded the song and for another generation, you've heard there's peace in the valley for me. Say it out loud, there's peace in the valley for me. The lyrics of the song express a truth about life and that truth is we all have our valleys. Some valleys get very low. Do I hear it? Amen. We all have our valleys and we all walk through disappointment and sorrow and pain and suffering. Yet in the valley, God always brings peace to his child. Assurance and love can be found in the presence of God in your valley. You may be going through a tough time right now, but I want to tell you, God can be there in the valley with you and bring you victoriously through the dark moments of your life. It's in the valley when we discover God has a new level for us, a new place for us. There's hundreds and hundreds of references in the Bible about valleys. And every one of those valleys that is recorded, someone had a great victory and somebody was defeated in the valley. God 
usually had one of his great prophets or great servants have a struggle in a valley, had a difficulty in a valley. The reason it's written there and it speaks of that valley is God wants the whole world to know that he's not only the God of the mountaintop, but he's God of the valley as well. He's not only God in the good time, he's God in the bad time. He's not only God when everything's all right, he's God in the midnight hour. He's God all time, hallelujah, seven days a week. He's God and he never will cease to be God. He's on control of everything. You can trust him in the lowest valleys of your life. In each one of those valleys, there was an experience that God wanted the whole world to know about. There was a victory to be remembered. Remember this, valleys are not meant to destroy us, they're meant to grow us. Valleys are not meant to defeat us, they're just God's plan to take us into a new level and a little bit higher. We discover how great and awesome God is in trying times. If all we ever experienced was the good times, we wouldn't know how to appreciate the good times. But we go through some tough times so we can know that God's hand brought us through, God's power brought us out. We are victorious through him. And so when we reach the mountaintop, we can look back at the valley and say, I see the footprints of God who lifted me up out of the valley. Do I hear it? Amen. Valleys are meant to grow us, not to defeat us. It's God's plan to bring us through we, because we discover how great he is. The late Dottie Rambo wrote a song, a beautiful song that's blessed my heart many, many times. And the title of the song is, In the Valley, He Restores My Soul. He restores us in the valley, which means he brings us back to life. He puts strength in us that we didn't have when we entered the valley. He gives us knowledge and wisdom and revelation that we didn't have when we started in the valley. Supernaturally, he empowers us to be more godlike and more like him and less like us. We trust not in the arm of flesh, but we trust in the living God. The hope of glory, do I hear it, amen. I don't mean to minimize your problem this morning. I don't mean to call, say that it's less or speak of it lightly, but I just want to tell you that problem you're walking through, it ain't no strut for God to take care of. It's not a problem with God. He's already got your answer. He's already got provision made for you. I wish everybody in this room get as excited as I am about this. I've never been so excited about a valley because I found out God is the God of the valley. He's going to lift us up high, praise God. He's going to bring you out. You're not going to live there forever. You're walking through it, praise God. You're not going to stay in your valley. That dark moment will not swallow you up and defeat you. God will bring you out. He's your God, your Savior. Hallelujah. I realize that going through difficulty is painful. Physically, it's hurtful. Emotionally, it's draining. When someone you love walks away, when a friend you love walks out on you, when a loved one, a co-worker. But could I just tell you, God is taking you a little bit higher. You don't need them where you're going. <clears throat> you didn't hear me. They're not going to go with you. <laughs> you're going a little bit higher. I said you're going higher. There's a chain taking place in your life. God's taking you through the valley, but you're not going to stay in the valley. When you get on the other side, you're going to be a different person than you was when you started in your valley. God's able to help you out. Hallelujah. They're not going where you're going. You're going to a new level, a higher place in God. The one, the earthly one you depended on so long that made you miserable so long. It kept you trying Kept you from trying so hard to serve God. Well, cheer up. You don't need that old goat, I mean that old fellow anymore. Some of the greatest victories you've ever had will be in the valley. David slew Goliath in the valley of Elah. David went there as one of the first meals on wheels guy. He was delivering food to his brothers. He was a piece of delivery boy before there was one. And a giant got in his way. He didn't get up that morning and say, I think I'll go kill a giant today. 
He was just obeying his father, bringing food to the hungry, and a giant got in his way. David's past experiences and his past revelations of God prepared him for the valley where he had faced a giant and defeated. When you're in the valley, the circumstances may look overwhelming in the natural. Are you listening to me? You feel like you're standing all alone. You don't have the choir singing in the background, some beautiful mood music. You don't have all the colored lights that just changes, you know, with your mood. You, you don't have all kinds of preachers standing back behind you supporting everything you do. You're standing alone in the valley and opposition seems far too bigger than you, much bigger than you are. How come the enemy always looks taller, uglier, meaner, bigger? Do you know what I'm talking about? When you get in the valley, your storm looks giant. When you get in, in the trouble, everything looks so far greater than you are. But could I tell you, you just need to remember what God has done for you in the past, that he's still presently with you, and the Lord who's brought you this far will not abandon you now. The God of yesterday is the God of today, and he'll be the God of tomorrow. You'll get through this, hallelujah, and when you do, you'll look back and say, God brought victory to me. Turn to somebody and say, you'll get through this. Remember what God's already done for you. Remember his promise. No weapon formed against you will succeed. And greater is he who is in you than he that's in the world. Remember this word. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Remember, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of God, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. When I get into trouble, I run to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. Your God won't fail you. The angels of his presence surround you. You're coming through the valley. You're not going to stay there. You're you're not going to be defeated. God reigns in his glory. Hallelujah. And you are his child. Remember God is on the throne. Hallelujah. And you will succeed. Give God praise in this house today. Would you? Hallelujah. <clears throat> today your valley may seem ugly. And today your valley may seem mean and today your valley may look overwhelming. You lost your job, you're in financial crisis, your best, best friend has chosen not to be your best friend, walked away out of your life. Maybe you're raising a teenager. Woo, and they messed up big time. I just want you to know there's a God who's seated on the throne and there's a God can come and rescue you in the deepest of valleys when it looked like it's impossible. It's not impossible. Hallelujah, because I know one that said I am the way maker. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And where there seemeth to be no way, I'll make a way for you. Hallelujah. In the valley. No valley is going to conquer me. Say it out loud. No valley is going to conquer me. God knows where you are. God sees what you need. You are his child. And the Bible says this, call upon me and you will be saved. While you are yet calling, I will answer. Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. God's promises covers the valleys. As a natural man, I'm much like you. I wish the ground was level that we travel on. I wish everything was just smooth, but it just doesn't work that way, does it? And the person that tells you that everything is just smooth and you'll never have a worry or care or never have a trial, you better run from that fellow because he hadn't lived long enough to know what life's all about. As a preacher, I've faced some low moments. I've been through some valleys. I pray every day of my life and I still have valleys that I go through with. 
I do my best to live right, and I still have valleys that I go through with. But you know what? I've never come to a valley that God wasn't the God of that valley and brought me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ever since Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden, life has been full of highs and lows. Highs and lows. And you know, it doesn't make any difference if you're wealthy. If you've got millions of dollars, there's still highs and lows. Just buried Prince the other day, an acclaimed musician. I think his last album, he played himself 27 instruments. Wow. That's just absolutely, totally incredible to be that kind of, have that kind of talent. But gotta tell you, in all of the fame and fortune he had, he had highs and he had way deep lows. So everybody is that way. But you know what? We need to remember the one of the titles given to Jesus, and I love this. One of the titles given to our Lord is this. Everybody listen. The title is He's the Lily of the Valley. When you are in the midst of the most critical moment of your life, you feel like there's nobody there, nobody with you, and you are in the lowest of valleys, just remember the lily of the valley is there. Hallelujah. The fragrance of his presence will pour down on you. In the valley, he will restore your soul. One of the most wonderful passages of Scripture that I have believed in and trusted in and, and applied to my life is this verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Listen to this. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of God forever. It is important for us to know that when you go through the valley, he's still the shepherd. There's no enemy that'll ever be able to run him off. The wolves of this world will not be able to run your shepherd off. He's going to stay with you through the thick and the thin, through all the muck and the mire. It doesn't make any difference. What life throws at you, you've got a shepherd that takes you through the valley. Takes you through the valley. Always remember you're going through the valley. You're not staying there. Learn what you need to learn and move on. Come on. Did you hear that? Learn what you need to learn in the valley, but move on. Keep living. Keep pressing on. Keep going forward. David got his food delivered and slew a giant and took off. He didn't just stay there in the valley. He didn't build a shrine there. He didn't build a memorial there. He got out of the valley as quick as he could. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the message is, do your business and get out of the valley. He went there with food, pizza in his hand, and he come out with a sword in the head of an enemy with his hand. When he left the, the, the valley, he left the devil flat of his back and dead with his head cut off. Come on, do your business, get God in your life, and slay the giant, whatever it is, and put the ugly on the ground, nail him to the floor, get up out of the valley and go out, praise God, victorious, because your God fight your battles for you. Hallelujah. The valley didn't happen to destroy you. Our God is a mighty God and he's going to take you through the storms of life. Don't just sit and complain in your valley. Whining about the valley won't help you at all. Be like Samson. Let the Holy Spirit of God come upon you. And you put the devil on his back and get up and get out of the valley. Could I tell you, Jesus has already defeated the devil. I want to remind you, I said Jesus has already defeated the devil. 
He's going about as a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour. But the truth of the matter is the Lord's already took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the devil's hand. We have victory already over the devil. Hallelujah. That valley's not going to destroy you. No valley's going to conquer me. Our God is faithful to do what he promised. Jesus Christ has won your battle for you. All you need to do is put your hand in his hand. You are this moment victorious over everything you're fighting against you. Remember this. Your valley is temporary. And I, I like this. One of my favorite verses of scriptures, this little short verse, it says, and this too shall pass. Hallelujah. Valley is going to be over with one day. Say amen. You'll get through this. The scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory. You may be going through a hardship right now, but the sun's coming up in the morning. You may be going through trial right now, but the glowing sun's going to rise in the morning. The nighttime may seem dark and lonely and hurtful, but the sun's coming up in the morning. A new day's about to dawn. Victory is about to happen. Hallelujah. You're coming out of your valley. It's going to be a new season, a new time, a blessed moment in your life. Don't stop in the valley. Keep on going. Don't have a panic attack when you get in the valley. Don't have a pity party when you get in the valley. Don't start a blame game when you get in the valley. Hallelujah. I tell you what you need to do. Just run to the rock that's higher than you are. Run to God. Remember your God child. You're a king, son, a daughter. Royal blood flows in your vein. You've been blessed, blessed, too blessed to be stressed. Amen. God has his hand on you. You may be down, but you're not out. The battle is the Lord. Trust in him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Your steps are ordered by the Lord, and victory is yours in his name. Stand with me, would you please? You've been waiting on me to say that. God's already planned for your success. God's already planned for your deliverance. God's already planned for your joy. God's already planned for your victory. I'm afraid you're not listening to me. I just feel in my heart to tell you this, there's already a victory party being planned in heaven for you. The angels are shouting in glory because deliverance is coming, victory's coming, blessings coming, Holy Spirit is coming, God's going to reign in his church, hallelujah. Victory is yours in Jesus' holy name. There's a celebration about to take place because the people of God is going to come up out of the valley. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands to him and praise him. Father, we bless you today. We thank you today. We exalt you today. Glory, glory, glory to your holy name. I pray for all of my friends, my brothers and sisters, that the blessings of God would rest on them Whatever it is that they're going through, I pray that victory will be established and for a certain in their heart right now. Pray that God's presence and glory will rest on them even in this difficult moment. God, do a miracle for them. Let a miracle happen in their valley this morning. In Christ's name. I want you to start. Thank you so much for watching this video and I want to do this for you today. I want you to join me and just say the, the prayer of the sinner. And I hope that you will let, let Jesus Christ come into your heart and change your life. God's got a good plan for your life. All you need to do is invite him in. And the Bible said he'll come in and live inside of you. So pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I am a sinner, that God loves me, and that God wants to save me. So I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and has come to save me. I accept him right now as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for saving my life. Amen. God bless you, my friend. And may the Lord bless you and keep you all.